All right, next we're going to move into the layout designer when we're customizing our invoices. All right, so I'm going to go up here to lists and down to templates again. I'm going to edit this four lane invoice. All right, so it starts with basic customization. We have the additional customization area here, and then we're going to go into layout designer. A lot of the times when I'm adding, I mean, I use the other additional customization area, right, to add um, what columns I want or what headers I want. It's usually a little bit easier there than trying to add it from the data field here because there's a lot of data fields you can add from. Um, however, if I'm adding anything else, I usually just come straight to the layout designer because it's going to be easier because as you saw, right, when we add in the basic customization, it stuck the email address just in this random place down here. So I still have to end up coming into the layout designer anyway to make sure that things aren't just randomly speckled around my invoice template. Okay, so what does the layout designer do? So first of all, um, it gives us these little boxes. So these are meant to be, right, an envelope box. So you kind of have an idea of where to put things on the screen. You want to make sure the return address is falling within this range and the address you're sending to is falling within this range here. All right. Um, I can drag and drop boxes to move them around the screen. So if I wanted to make my invoice, I'm sorry, my logo bigger, I can make that logo show up a little larger here. All right, maybe I don't need to have my company name since I already have my logo there, and right? It's in the name there. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this box and remove it. Okay, I would also be able to hit that remove button up top. Okay, if I needed to edit the properties of any of these boxes, I can just double click on it. I can change, right, the justification here. So I can move it to center if I wanted to. Um, I can change the font here. Remember I said there's an easier way to change the fonts going forward. So I can change the font to, let's say, uh, let's find one that's Rockwell. Okay. And the size and the color. I can add the border. So right now there's no border around it. Maybe I wanted to have a border on the bottom or the top. I'll just add those in there and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so it's very similar to Excel with the properties. And then if I needed to fill the background for any reason, I can do that here. Okay. So then once I have that the way I want it to look, I can drag and drop it over so that it shows up there. If you're seeing anything, right, like wrap, then you just need to come in here. So see how it kind of wrapped around like that? You just need to come in here and extend the box so that way it won't wrap around. All right, this field I can't edit right now because it's pull, it's a data field, right? It's say it pulled my company address here. But if I wanted to not pull it as a company address, so let's say we had multiple addresses, right? And I needed to show all the addresses in here. Instead of just adding the company or the corporate address, I can actually come in and add just a text box, okay? So text box says 7,000 North Mopac, Austin, Texas, right? So I add it like that. I can still do all the different justifications. I'm going to justify it to the left, the borders, etc. Okay, so it adds it down here now. I just drag that box up, move it over. Okay, now if I edited that box again, like I don't like how it's in the center here and I don't really want to have the the um, boxes around the outside edge or the lines around the outside edge, I just double click on it. I can add it, edit, right? So I want it to say 7000 North period Mopac. Um, I can say I want it to be on the top, right? Vertical justification and then take out all the borders. All right. Now if I get it to look, let me make this stand out a little bit. So let's do the text is going to be uh, size 12. Okay. Okay, so I get this text to look a little different. So if I liked this text here, I can say copy format. 
And then I can just start clicking on boxes so it copies that same format for me, right? So it changes them all to have that same font, that same size, and the same um, uh, colors or anything like that that I had in there, okay? All right. Uh, in this area of the layout designer, this is the only place that we have an undo in QuickBooks. Um, so you can, if you didn't like something you just did, you can hit undo and slowly take it back. Okay, or redo. All right, so we can add text box fields. We can add data fields. These are data fields that are pulling from other fields in QuickBooks, right? So it's not just where I just could go in and free type in a box. This is pulling from a field you have set up somewhere else. So I could add their birthday, that's set up at the customer level. I could add our internal company, company name, company phone number, the customer credit limit, email, fax, right? So there's different information that we can add throughout here. Okay. Um, I can also add images. So again, if I didn't want to use my logo or I wanted to put an image in the background as an example back behind my items, I could uh, add images as well. Okay. All right. Um, if I wanted to rename fields here, I can do it. So terms, if I wanted to just put it on here T as an example, I could change that here. But of course the data I can't change because the data is going to be pulling from the uh, tr actual transaction. All right, if I wanted to resize some of these so that they have a more you know, uh, uniform size, what I can do is I can actually come in here. So let me drag this box over to the side. Drag this box over to the side. Okay, you want to make sure to keep track of, right, kind of keep those two boxes that are stacked on top of each other together because this sample doesn't say sample terms, right? So if I just stuck the sample over here and played around and then accidentally put this sample over there, it might mess up my uh, design a little bit. Okay, but if I wanted them to have a, a uniform size, so what I do is first I click on the one I want to change and then I click on the size I want it to be, right? So, and I hit the shift key and then click on the size I want it to be. And then I change it to say size. You could do it just height and width as well, but I'm gonna say size. So then notice it moved, whoops, it moved that box now to be the exact same size as this one, okay? So same thing with this little field here, I want it to be the same size as this T field. So I'm going to click on this one because it's the one I want to change. And then I click on the one I want it to be. Hit size. Okay, so that it modifies the size and now they're the exact same size. Okay, uh, down below, totals. Um, this area I've seen a lot be played with, right? Moving them up on the field, you know, moving them up or moving them around. Um, you can add, when you add some of the data fields that you can add on here are fields that are total, so balance due uh, fields. You can add if you had sales tax, obviously sales tax would be an option, um, you know, the total. So there are some different fields that you can add in here. Um, if we wanted to uh, add a disclaimer or, a, a, you know, statement at the bottom, again, we could have done it when we did the uh, additional information as a footer, but I like to just come in here and add a text box. So, you know, really important info. And I'm just gonna paste it a whole bunch of times just so that it's long. Okay, so again, choose the border, choose how I want it to be justified. And then it adds it here, but I can just drag it down to the bottom make it wider, right, so that all the information is there. Um, also things that you print out, if you take physical signatures on things, anything, or you want them to fill it out, I've seen customers modify this, right, where they take the box, they drag this up, you know, drag all those, whoops, drag all these totals up. Oh, 
<laughs> I keep double clicking on it. And then down here below, they'll do a whole bunch of add fields, right? To say add credit card information for payment later or like a, a little dot, 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 dot. So, you know, take off this portion and return it with your payment. Okay, so you can really play around with this um, and get it to look, you know, quite different from what uh, comes standard with QuickBooks. Um, and then, of course, one of the other things that is important uh, to know is that when you go in actually uh, to our um, right click and edit in our template list, we have the ability to download template templates. Um, so you can download those from online. Um, Quick, you know, QuickBooks provides some different template layouts that people have created in the past. So you can take a look at those and see if you want to use those as starter places. The other thing that's really important to note is that if you want to, you know, I built out my four lane invoice, but I want to use the exact same kind of layout for my sales orders as well. So I can actually go in and edit this template or right click, I'm sorry, right click on the template. Actually, you can't do it there. You do it down uh, below here. I can come down here to templates and create and say duplicate. When I say duplicate, it's going to go in and make a duplicate, right, of the invoice. But you don't want to select it as invoice. You want to say, I, but I want it to be the type sales order. So it's going to create this separate type, right, called four lane invoice. So now I probably want to go in and edit it, manage my templates, and say, you know, this is a four lane sales order instead and take away the copy of. I also need to go in there because it duplicates everything. So I need to go in there to additional customization and instead of calling it INV, I need to call it sales order, right? And maybe instead of invoice number, I need to change this to say SO number. <clears throat> so obviously there are going to be some fields that it keeps and maintains, but you just want to make sure that you, if you do that duplicate, you come in here and you edit it to make it um, so that it doesn't say invoice on a sales order. Okay. All right, lots of information, so go ahead out and customize your invoice templates.